Look at my little massive school of pilchards down there. Oh, yeah, fish candy. Nom 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 nom. Oh yeah, baby. I'm telling you, it's the shirt. It's like a magnet. Pilchard magnet. Man, oh my gosh, look at all these pilchards. This whole basin is full of them. A little bit too many. Is the Sandies? Flushing down the toilet. Get, 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 get. Too many. Now that we've cast netted our fish candy, uh, let me show you how I rig them. But first, let me show you the two types of uh, pilchers that we actually have down here. Uh, this is the one, this is our standard razor belly pilchard. Uh, if you run your finger along the bottom, it's very sharp. You can't go that direction with your finger. Uh, that's called the razor belly there. And then we've got this big boy, and these are our sandy pilchards, uh, much larger. They get, this is probably a medium size in regards to the type of pilchards. They get really big, more like a mullet than they are a pilchard, but they are actually both pilchards. Uh, so let me show you how we rig them. First off, I'm gonna show you the locations of where to place the hook, um, whether it be a circle hook, a live bait hook, just the best parts inside the actual pilchard. The thing to understand about pilchards is they're a soft bait, and that's actually partially why they're fish candy. It's not like a pinfish that's got pins as uh, fins and stuff and very sharp to bite down on. These are nice and mushy and soft, which is a good thing because they make great tasting bait, not so good for in regards to staying on your hook. So that's why importance of uh, showing you how to do that. Now the first way and the most standard way is to basically go from nostril to nostril, side to side. Um, that's actually one of the better ways to do it because it allows them to to breathe and it'll stay somewhat natural. Uh, if you go right throughout that area there, there's a little bit harder cartilage and uh, it's still strong enough to hold on to the hook where the other parts that you put a lot of times will just pull out, but I've got a trick for that. So that's kind of the most common way of doing it right there. Still allows them to open their mouth and breathe, but gives them full mobility to swim around naturally. So. You can go wherever he wants to there and then just swim naturally. In that same regards of hook placement, there's another location here where you see these kind of like a cheek plates and those are kind of like harder uh, cartilage there. You can also run the hook through there and then out the other side of the cartilage and that's a little bit stronger since here is very soft but it's still that nasal area and then you've got that center part that's a kind of like a spine but that's a little bit harder to prevent the hook being pulled out. So that's the main way most people do it. These are the lucky guys. They get one hook and then they get to swim away. Next, you can do a placement just along the back there. Just use your tip to remove a scale. And once you get that scale off, it'll puncture through no problem. And then you can just basically dangle it that way. Um, I like to do it this way if I was putting it underneath the bobber. That way it can kind of rotate around and swim naturally that way. A second option is that you could actually place the hook right above the anal fin there or you could place it on the top side of it. And what that'll allow you to do is to swim that bait away from you. So especially if you're working mangroves, you can toss this out and then it'll automatically swim away from the line going towards whatever direction maybe towards some mangroves where the overhang is and then you could stop the line and it'll just sit there and struggle like that. 
So that works effectively well. Uh, depending on if you place it towards the bottom or the top, you can actually help it to angle down or you can make it angle up. Now a problem with these baits is that they're very soft. But again, that's why they're delicious. But uh, the issue though is that a lot of times if you ever try to cast with these, uh, your hook will go one way and the bait will go another and it's just not a lot of spots where it can hold the force of a cast. However, there is one location which works out fairly well and that's if you go through basically the chin and then out the hard cartilage of basically the forehead. Okay, and with that placement there, you have that little sturdy point, anchor point, that will allow you to throw with some force. It's still not super rock cranium hard, so you still have to be somewhat gentle, but that'll hold it very well there. Now in that same regard of chin out the forehead, when I'm using my Cobra jig head, that's exactly the way I do it. Uh, through the chin, out the forehead there, and that keeps that profile and it keeps that bait in line. Uh, just like you would a paddle tail, these jig heads will keep them centered and upright. So if you go right through the top like that, it'll keep them and allow them to swim. Uh, a perfect size is the quarter ounce Cobra jig head because these uh, baits are still able to suspend themselves even with that live bait there and even with the uh, Cobra jig head weight. And then it kind of suspends them in the mid water column and uh, yeah, deadly. Now and finally, if you're using dead pilchards, dead fresh ones are okay, dead frozen, man, they just fall apart. They, it's just not a good bait to use, but you can still use them by doing this trick. Uh, take your hook or jig head, go through the mouth, and then basically you're gonna wanna push it as far as you can so that hook is coming as far back in the head as possible. This hook is small compared to this bait here, but I get it started through there and then as you'll see I'll push it out the forehead and there you go okay so it's hook is as far back as I can get it in there it's right in that cranial hard uh, head part there and then that'll stay solid if you try to hook this bait anywhere else it'll just fall off the hook without doing anything with these Cobra jig heads like this this bait actually will swim straight no different than if you added a paddle tail to it um, it just works so well together like that. The way this is weighted, the way the hook keeps it from so it won't slide over, and it just, boom, you can just bounce it along the floor there. Here's a tip if you're having problems with your pilchard basically just falling off the hook, whether that be when you're casting, or a lot of times, even once you've got them in the water, they'll struggle and they'll just pop off the hook, uh, primarily just because they're so soft. Uh, the way I resolve that, I bring along a, just a spare piece of soft plastic. This happens to be a worm or even a little section of a bicycle inner tube. Uh, if you have those little round circles from a hole punch, if you've done some plastic, those are great. And I've also even used just a torn off corner of a plastic bag. But I'll take uh, any one of those little pieces. And then once I've got the pilchard on the hook, I'll take that little piece and I'll just basically insert that onto the hook and just push it past the barb. Because once it's past the barb, okay, it can't push back over the barb, and that'll prevent the bait from pushing back over the barb. Another second helpful hint is that you can take two of these, put one on before the bait. So on the bare hook, put one on there, then the bait, and then your stopper. What that prevents is that bait from slipping up and down the hook, whether it's from struggling or when a fish bites. A lot of times what happens, it'll push up on that hook, that hook will twist, and it'll come back and hook that bait again. And once it's like that, that hook point is concealed and it's not going to allow you to penetrate your uh, target fish's mouth. So that'll prevent that. So that's a great tip for uh, helping you to uh, perfect your pilchard fishing. All right, so that's how I rig my fish candy. Um, such an important bait right now. We're just in the beginning of the season where those pilchards are just really coming inland. Uh, but as you've been seeing by my videos, those predator fish from offshore and uh, the reef are falling right behind them. So it's a great time to uh, use these uh, pilchards. So go out and get them. 
Uh, bring your cast net. If you don't know how, best time to do it to learn because if you find the pilchards, it's just blacked out. You just got to get that net to open and you'll get some. Uh, otherwise, you could try sabiking them and just getting them one at a time. But uh, anyways, it's fish candy, so definitely give it a try. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.